different paths in Qigong. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Qi Life. So one of the analogies I sometimes use in um, talking about different people's Qigong journey, and I, well, that's an analogy right there that you're, um, I use it so much, I just use journey all the time, but your, your process of learning Qigong and practicing Qigong, you can think of as very much like a journey. There's, there's going to be different things that you encounter along the way, um, sometimes parts of it are going to be really easy and then there might be some parts where it's a bit hard maybe the path gets a bit muddy or steep or something like that you know there's going to be beautiful views at different points and sometimes it's going to rain sometimes it's going to be sunny you can experience lots of things along the way um and 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 one of the parts of this analogy that i sometimes talk about is that on this journey it can be a bit like climbing a mountain that you're like, okay, I'm on the journey and I'm experiencing different things and I want to get to the top of the mountain. Because at the top of the mountain, we have this beautiful, broad perspective uh, when we get there and un un we, can, we can see things in context from the top of the mountain. We can piece everything together. And our understanding will develop bit by bit as we go. And at certain points when we're partway up the mountain, we can see some things, but there's other bits around the corner we can't really see. When we get right to the very top, we can, wow, we can kind of see bits of everything. And one of the things about this is that often when we're climbing a mountain, if you've, if you've done some hiking, often there's more than one path to the top. There's different ways that we can go to get to the top of the mountain. And if we take those different paths, we'll experience different things along the way and we'll get a richer view of some things along the way too. Uh, but when we get to the top, we still have this broad, beautiful view, understanding of, of the space around us. Within um, Qigong, historically, there have been three main paths, three main applications of, uh, of Qigong practice, which then shapes the way we practice. Um, and what we do within that. So one of those is health, focusing on health. There's different parts to this. There's focusing on just making ourselves healthy, recovering through illness and so on, through uh, doing practices. And then there's also using Qigong as a way to heal others, to help them be healthy. Then there is the, the path of the warrior, the martial artist, um, which, again, historically it was applied very much to martial arts. Uh, the world was a lot more violent in the past than it is now. We sometimes think, oh, the world's really dangerous now, and there's certainly a lot of danger out there. But in the big perspective of things, it is more peaceful than it has ever been. Uh, and let's hope it continues to get more peaceful. Uh, there might be some ups and downs along the way, but let's hope it gets more peaceful. Anciently, world was a much more dangerous place in terms of possibly needing to uh, defend yourself against violent aggression. And so um, having a, a, a path of developing um, your ability with your energy to make yourself strong, resilient, fast, um, focused, all of these sorts of things was really useful. Uh, in a more modern context, it can still be applied to martial arts, to that sort of thing, but we might also apply that to physical performance. You know, people might be more interested in sports and athleticism necessarily than fighting, and, and those kinds of practices often apply really well to that. And then the third of the main historic applications was to, it was the broader, more philosophical path. We can think of this as the path of the sage. Um, and whether you think of that as spiritual or philosophical, whatever terminology you want, it's about understanding yourself, understanding the world, and having this rich perspective of it. So three main paths, the healer, the warrior, the sage, health and well-being, high performance, and perspective and philosophy. Now, again, if you've been hiking, um, often with different paths, if there's more than one path, up a mountain they'll often actually cross over each other and you'll come to a bit it's like if you want to follow this path go this way if you want to follow the other path go this way you know and they'll take you through some different parts of the mountain and this is the same of each of these three paths as well so the practices that the healer might focus on 
they certainly do give you an understanding of yourself, the world around you, and they're also going to be helpful for high performance. So there's a crossover there, but the main focus is on the health and the wellness. The the practices that um, the warrior might focus on, yeah, they make them fit and strong and healthy and resilient and all of this sort of thing. They make them healthy too. There's specific health benefits and they might help you know, certain practices might help with very specific health conditions. And they also give understanding of the world around them and of themselves, right? And last one, to be to be complete, I might as well talk about the last one as well, the path of the sage, the practices they focus on, they're about having this broad understanding of the world and of themselves, but they also naturally do things to help with their health and help with their physical performance. So, so they cross over lots of times, but they have, they, they cover some different territory along the way as well and so as part of that each of these paths will develop a richer understanding and development of skill in these different areas i think it's a useful way to think of different qigong practices and um, again recognizing there's a crossover between all of them but to be able to think of them in these different ways according to their historic application and that's the way the long white cloud qigong syllabus is organized largely there are some practices that don't necessarily fit specifically in one of those but um, largely organized in this way is practices focusing primarily on health uh, practices that develop that more physical resilience, that intensity of the energy, and practices that develop that more broad philosophical understanding. And so those are, so the, the path of the healer is the small universe Qigong program, and it, it focuses very much on the primary flows of energy within our body, and so you really come to understand your energy anatomy. So uh, the flow of the meridians, the same meridians used in acupuncture, Right? And the reason why they use an acupuncture, you know, for health, for healing, is because they influence um, the function of the internal organs. They influence the function of the external body as well, and the posture, and the emotions, and all of this comes together. So we get a lot of understanding of ourselves through that, but real direct application to our health. Um, the Dantian, coming to understand the way our energy gathers and is pooled and stored. The extraordinary meridians those strong flows of energy that keep our stored energy um, fresh. These are very much like, uh, like the flow of ocean currents. Um, so we've got the, the rivers, the, the organ meridians, the, the dantians like the oceans or the lakes, the extraordinary meridians like the ocean currents. And then the energy that flows into our energy field, and this is like the clouds and the rain that circulates, bringing energy right through our body as well. So that's the main focus of the small universe program. And each of these parts of their energy anatomy are really helpful in helping to develop health, helping to recover from illness and so on, as well as just giving a foundational understanding of how our energy works. And... Uh, the warrior path, uh, that's our inner fire program within the Long White Cloud Qigong syllabus. And so in that, we, we do a lot of breath work in that program. So we start by working with inner fire breath work, which is a whole series of different traditional uh, breathing practices, each which have their own specific benefit, each which have health benefits, right? But overall, they help us to activate our energy and make it really active and vital, which can both help heal us, help us recover from different illnesses, but also develop the strength and intensity of our energy that can support us in having a higher level of performance. We then also work with wild animal play. So these are practices that are based on observation of wild animals and doing different movements, copying those wild animals to develop different characteristics within our energy as well as physical capabilities. Now these practices they, they can be done in a gentle way, but naturally they encourage you to become more dynamic, stronger, better balance, faster, uh, and so on. Uh, and then we also do Iron Shirt Qigong. Iron Shirt Qigong is a really fascinating uh, type of practice. A again, it, it, it applies directly to that warrior's path because Iron Shirt Qigong was used to develop great strength and resilience, the ability to withstand strikes, people punching you, hitting you, kicking you, hitting you with sticks, whatever it is, and to be able to resist that and not be hurt or injured. <clears throat> it's really interesting though because the way the practices work is for someone who's a really high-level athlete, um, Iron Shirt Qigong might be the hardest thing they've ever done. 
it can be. They can practice it in that way where it can challenge them to, to the highest degree. But at the same time, they can someone who has been sick, unwell, injured, can practice those iron shirt practices in a way that's much more gentle and rebuilds them. So it takes them from a place of being weak and rebuilds them into being strong. And so it can be completely scaled. So, and, and really, the, the quality of what we're working with is quite different from other practices and those iron shirt practices. Then we also do a whole lot of breathing theory uh, and application as well to really understand how our breath um, affects our mind, affects our uh, physical performance and so on. That's, you know, so valuable as well within the path of the warrior. So we do that in the inner fire program as well. And then the last of the paths within the Long White Cloud Qigong uh, syllabus is, it's the elemental alchemy one. This is the path of the sage. It's about understanding things in a bigger context. Again, with physical benefits, with um, a lot of health benefits, a lot of benefits for the emotion, benefits to physical performance as well, of course. Um, but, it, but it's really about this broad um, understanding. And in there, we work through Wuji, Taiji, and Wuxing. So this is a natural progression. From Wuji, it's the formless, the primordial, through to Taiji. This is the development of polarity and then the harmonious interaction of that polarity to circulate the energy to create vitality and movement. And then from Taiji through to Wuxing, that's the five elements or the five phases, understanding the flow of energy through life in the environment around us, uh, but also through different phases of our life, through the different seasons, through projects, through, you know, so many different things. And doing different Qigong practices to help us to harmonize and balance all these different aspects of our energy, as well as gaining this broad philosophical perspective and understanding of life as a whole. It's interesting because um, I haven't been running the Elemental Alchemy program for all that long took a long time for me to get it ready um, and but just 2023 last year was the first time I started running it and it's been really interesting so far because well, a fair few people have been through it but not as many as the other programs um, but the number of people within those, those that have gone through have who have said hey doing this program and the practices in it has really sparked some big life changes for them it's, it's been really interesting to see just how powerfully these relatively simple practices have had an effect on, on a big scale through people's lives. So these are the, the, the three historic applications, the three main paths that you can fit a lot of Qigong practices into. Like I said, there are some other practices that you can think of as maybe little side detour um, paths that maybe take you to a different lookout or so on. You know, you learn different things about the mountain. But each of them take you to the top and give you a, a, a broad perspective, understanding of Qigong. And so doing just, following just one of these paths is a beautiful experience. They are well-rounded in themselves. Many people though, decide that having been to the mountain on one path, to the top of the mountain, they decide, hey, actually I'd like to explore some different aspects of this mountain, this mountain of Qigong, and they want to go up another path or another path and eventually do all of them. So it really rounds out and they really have a, a richer appreciation of all the parts of Qigong. I, I had someone who's just emailed me recently having, um, having completed one of the courses and is wanting to do both of the others. Um, and in her email, she was saying, yeah, you know, as she looks at it, you know, she's really enjoyed the first course and got a lot out of it. But with all the different parts, having not done them yet, but having some insight into what's in these other paths, she really sees it as one big course to do all, all three of those to gain that rich understanding of, you know, all these different aspects. And you can look at it that way. Um, certainly, if you do that, you get a much you know, each each of those different paths, those programs, brings in more richness, more perspective, greater context. And, and doing one of them will give you better understanding of the other practices you've already studied. Doesn't mean you have to do that though. Some people will be like, you know what, this one path, that's the one I want to follow. That's the thing I really want to focus on. And again, it's contained in itself. It has enough in itself. And um, yeah, that's fine to just do one. Or some people might, I, I'm interested in these two, but not the third one. That's fine. You don't have to take every path when you're hiking. You don't have to take every path. You can pick the ones you want to follow. Um, but that's what we offer at Long White Cloud Chigo. We offer some other courses as well, and there, there will be more things in the future. But these are the main different paths that we offer 
Um, and ho yeah, hopefully that gives you some insight into what you'll focus on in those different courses. Um, now, now, of course, <laughs> Long White Cloud Qigong doesn't teach absolutely everything there is to know about Qigong. That's impossible. Qigong is vast. There's so many different approaches, different practices, and there are other schools, other teachers who use some completely different paths, or, or, they, or they might be related, but they cover some different territory. There's no way, you know, you can think of... Uh, me as the head of the Long White Cloud Qigong School and putting the programs together as your guide up the mountain. There's some paths I use and I take you up there and there's other ways. Some other guides might use some other paths and they might cross over at some places and you know that that that's cool. There's other paths as well. It's not, it's not like um, we have the monopoly on ways up the mountain. There's lots of ways up the mountain. They're all beautiful and and sometimes people might go like you know what I, I, I like the idea of, I like the look of that path, and they study that instead. Great, awesome. Um, but a lot of people have told me <laughs> that they've, they've gained a lot from following these paths up the mountain, um, a, a lot in terms of health and well-being, a lot in terms of uh, personal understanding of themselves, a lot in terms of, of physical performance, all, the, all those things that come from those traditional applications. And, and a lot just in terms of understanding Qigong, it sets them up because the way I try to teach these is really based on principles. So the practices, the practices are examples of principles. So we work with specific practices to gain experience of them, but to understand the principles underneath them. And that re then puts you in a really good position to understand, you know, some of the side paths and other paths as well. Because you're gaining experience as a hiker, you know, you're getting more skilled. You're able to follow things better by yourself over time as well. All right. Um, hopefully that's been interesting for some of you, maybe for some of you who've done some of the courses, if you have done some of the courses actually, maybe you can put a comment below what your experience was like with the Small Universe program or the Inner Fire program or the Elemental Alchemy one. If you've done more than one of those courses, maybe you could uh, comment on how they contrasted for you or how, you know, what your experience was doing more than one of them, how they fitted together. Um, that would be great. Um, or if you haven't done any of the courses yet and you're interested in them, hopefully it's given you some understanding of maybe maybe which one you want to focus on first uh, or which one might be the only one you want to focus on. Um, hopefully that's been interesting and useful for you. All right, I look forward to seeing you in another vlog soon.